Hi friends, are you ready to read chapter 10 of Chasing Helicity? When we left off yesterday, Helicity passed out in Lana's office because of the pictures that were, her pictures that were on the screen, or Lana's screen, and she'd never seen him that big and in such detail before. So she was pretty overwhelmed and she passed out. All right, let's read chapter 10 of Chasing Helicity. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sam yanked over the spare office chair and sat Helicity down in it. He knelt in front of her. You okay there, 14? Helicity squeezed her eyes shut tight. I'm a survivor, not a victim. I'm a survivor, not a victim. She repeated the words in her mind, willing to take root them to take root in her brain. Someone gently grasped her hands. Helicity breathed deeply in and out, nice and slow. It was Lana. She slid her hands to the insides of Helicity's wrists and pressed gently. These are pressure points, she murmured. Sometimes a little push on them helps calm a troubled mind. Lana's soft voice soothed the Helicity. She thought the touch on her pressure points did too. Slowly, she felt the panic ebb. She opened her eyes and found herself staring into Lana's deep brown ones. I'm okay. She pulled in another deep breath and let it out. Lana continued to hold her gaze and her wrists. I'm a survivor, not a victim. Sam, Lana said quietly, give us a minute, will you? But Lana looked up at him and closed the door. Thanks. Sam made a sound like he was about to protest and then thought better of it. He stood up and left without another word, pulling the door shut with a click behind him. Lana turned to face Helicity again. Her expression was concerned. I thought it might be easier for you to talk without Sam here. Talk? About your experience? Helicity glanced at the computer where her photos were still laid out on the screen. Lana reached behind her and closed out the page. Now, what you saw, she murmured, what you experienced during and after the tornado, what you're experiencing now in the wake of the storm. Talking about it might help you process everything just a little more. Helicity nodded slowly. Then she told Lana everything, her ride up the hilltop to think about the high school, her initial awe, and then her growing alarm at seeing the gathering storm, Andy's accident and the possible end of his football prospects, her father's fury and her own guilt. Finally, she, really, she revealed her hope of one day being just like Lana. Throughout, Lana murmured comments. That's how you got such amazing pictures. That's why your father was angry with the request last night. And that's why you reached out to me, even though you risked making him angrier, as if Helicity's story filled some blanks for her. When Helicity was done, Lana sat back and steepled her fingers to her lips. So this letter from the school, the one that set your story in motion, did it give you a deadline for overriding it? I've got it right here, let me check. Helicity opened her notebook and pulled the letter, the, the letter now soft and wrinkled from handling. She smoothed it out and found the deadline. It says they have until July 31st, why? Lana tilted her head to one side. Can I ask what's holding you back? Helicity dug her toe into the floor. My teachers don't think I can handle the work. I'm not sure my parents do either. And I need their permission to bump up to the next level. Hey, Helicity looked up to meet Lana's gaze. Do you think you can handle it? Lana asked. Helicity chewed on her bottom lip, thinking about the question. Finally, she shook her head. I'm not sure, she answered honestly, but I want to try. That won't change my parents' minds, though. Lana nodded thoughtfully. You have end of the term exams next week, right? If you ace them, would that make your parents agree to sign off on the override, do you think? Helicity blinked. Maybe. It would help, at least. That's for sure. Lana rolled her chair over the office door and opened it. Sam, you still there? She called. Sam stuck his head and said, at your service, what's up? You know how I said I'd keep an ear out for students for you to tutor? Lana in inclined her head at Helicity. Found one for you. Huh? Helicity and Sam said at the same time. Lana chuckled. You never been tutored before? You've never tutored before, Sam. Before I send students your way, you need to prove that you can do it. Helicity has final exams next week. You help her get the math and science material down so she could pass with flying colors, and I'll see about finding you some students. But don't tutors get paid? I don't have any money, Helicity said, or at least not a lot. Lana waved away her concern. Sam wouldn't accept payment anyway, would you, Sam? Sam heaved a huge sigh, pretending to be put out. <sighs> no, I suppose not, but I have one condition. You send me those photos. Felicity agreed readily. When Sam rattled off his contact info, she entered it into her phone and then forwarded him the images to him. He nodded his head with satisfaction when his phone pinged. Then it's settled, Lana said. You can use my office at this time every afternoon, starting tomorrow. I'll sit in as often as I can to help out and observe Sam's teaching style. How's that sound? Sam and Helicity exchanged glances. Then Sam laughed. We might as well say yes, 14. Lana's got it all figured out anyway. In that case, yes, 
one condition. Helicity said, Helicity said, Sam raised his eyebrows questioningly. Stop calling me 14. Helicity left Lana's office soon after that and made her way to the Human Resources Building, where her mother worked recruiting new instructors and her staff. But Mrs. Dunlap greeted her with exhaustion, an exhausted smile. I'll be just a few more minutes, she promised. No problem, Helicity reassured, reassured her. Then her moment's hesitation, she added, Hey, Mom, you know that woman from the meeting last night who works here, the meteorologist Lana McElvey? Mm-hmm, her mother responded distractedly as she shuffled through some papers. Well, I just met her. She's really nice. In fact, I'm going to be... Oh, shoot, Miss Dunlap interrupted with a groan of exasperation. Those aren't the right forms. Sorry, honey, you're going to have to wait a little longer so I can get this all sorted out. While her mother hurried to correct her paperwork issue, Helicity took a seat in the office easy chair and called Mia. Mia answered on the first ring. Hey, H, how'd, you, how'd it go with the weather woman? Meteorologist, Helicity corrected. Great, actually. There was this boy... Ooh, Mia cooed. There was, was there? Was he cute? Helicity felt herself blushing. Cut it out, Mia. Sheesh. He, she was, he was almost as old as Andy. So? So, he's going to be tutoring me after school this week and next. Tutoring you? Why? Mia wanted to know. Well, I want to do really well on the exams, math and science in particular. Why? Mia asked again. Because I'm thinking about going up to the honors levels in those courses next year. Mia didn't reply. Mia? Hello? Can you still hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Heard you. I went out of CP. Uh, uh, you went out of CP. Even though... Even though what? Helicity prompted when Mia didn't finish. Even though I'm in CP. Mia's voice suddenly had an edge to it. And so are all of your friends. If you move up, you won't be with us. Not in math or science or any other classes. Helicity sank deeper in the chair. We don't know that for sure. Yeah, we do, Mia retorted. So, how about you bump up too? Helicity regretted the suggestion the minute it came out of her mouth. Mia had dyslexia. She was clever and quick-witted, but because of her reading disability, she had to work very hard just to keep up with her current co course load. Suggesting her friend move up to a more challenging level had been insensitive. Helicity fumbled to apologize, but Mia cut her off. Listen, I gotta go. My, my grandmother's yelling at me to walk her dog again. Mia, wait! Helicity held her breath. Mia was her best friend, and it was bad enough she had inadvertently insulted her. She didn't want her to think she was going to abandon her. Not now, when the not now when the world was just such chaos. Not ever, actually. After a long pause, Mia muttered, "What? There's something neither of us thought of, which is." Felicity plucked at a stray hair escaping from her braid. "I might bomb out on the exams, even when the, with the extra help. And if I do," she gave her hair a fierce yank, wincing at the sharp pain as it pulled free then it's game over all right that was chapter 10. all right so i will see you next time for chapter 11 of chasing holicity